Hi, it's Art, short for Artemy, and you can find me at CU Artist pretty much everywhere. So I kind of wanted to share a more succinct comic process, and I figured the best way to do that, since I'm not going to just do one page in all of its completion at once for this challenge, I would get one of the already finished or mostly finished pages and just kind of break down all of the steps. So not going to show all of the progress for every little thing, but I have screenshots of the varying steps that I will kind of talk about. So I'm going to use page 16 as my example. It is one of the pages that, at least in concept, has been there since the beginning of the comic pretty much, and I have had at least the page layout set since I think like 2015. So there's a lot of different parts of it that I can show you. So I'm just gonna have the original kind of version of this that was in the marker pages. I definitely cut it down a lot though, also simultaneously spread it out. Then I have a little handwritten script that I had in a tiny little notebook and a thumbnail of the panel layout that I looks like I almost immediately ignored that and adjusted it. I'm not sure if I thought this stage was a thumbnail or a rough draft. I truly don't know, but I had a like eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that I drew quartered lines on and was drawing a page per quarter of the page. At this stage, I was still having like a meet the character page, which while I think is cute, I think isn't really necessary because I think the story can speak for itself. At this point, I had kind of made a plan for the house, but I really did not settle on one for a while. So I don't really have like an outline version to show for this page, but that kind of gives you an idea of, yep, I had this plan for a little bit and it one page is really a minuscule part in an outline, so hard to show for one page. Then I have a uh, script and then edited version of that it was a pretty simple page idea that I just kind of followed through on. Then I have my thumbnail and it really didn't change that much from the rough draft that I had done before this. Just a little bit of tweaking. I think that I rearranged the house again at this point, tried to change around the angles a little bit. Definitely still didn't have a great idea of varying composition though. One of the most difficult things for me is g moving from script to thumbnails. Figuring out page layout can be kind of brain boggling. So at this point in my process, I tend to make the script without a page break, and then I will work on the thumbnails simultaneously and try to do that in tandem so that I can kind of get the best idea for where a page will end, because just doing it with words doesn't really end up working for my brain. Then I have the officially the first rough draft. Really did not change much from the thumbnail on this one, just kind of adjusted how zoomed in some things were so that people's heads weren't cut off and stuff. I did that in 2019, and then after doing a lot more pages and eventually building my house model, I have this page, which is the second rough draft that I did. So I'm going to show like the in between the two rough drafts. I just took the one that was already there, figured out some better anatomy, used the house as a reference. So I just wanted to show how that can kind of look. And then I input text into it in Clip Studio. That is the official second rough draft. So as you can see, having a model to use for the house and kind of get different perspective on things really helped me be able to think about placing people in different places in the composition. Then here I have a little recording of how I make the panel borders. I create a like big rectangle over the entire page and have that saved, so all of them will have the same basic border. And since it's a vector layer, I just make a another rectangle and erase the overlapping lines, and that makes it the same for everything and a lot easier to keep nice. So this definitely isn't for this page, but I figured a little example might be nice. So here I have the finished up panel borders, and I also have the new speech bubbles 
put in. Then I like to select around the border and invert that selection and completely fill that and then have all of my stuff clipped to that layer. I could probably be using the Clip Studio panel tools, but I really, I do like to break the panels sometimes, and sometimes I have really strangely shaped panels, so that is why I do that a little bit more by hand. And so then, from there, I will duplicate the line art layer and move it to a lower level. And while it is still a vector, I will change it to that same light purple color. And then I will fill in any of the gaps in the line work and use the selection tool to select outside and invert that again. If there are any like spots around hair or like an arm is folded and there's a little hole, I can use the selection tool. They have a plus and a minus option so you can add on to what you already have selected or remove things that you have selected, which I did not know was a thing for a while. And then I use the rectangle tool on the fill setting to just quickly fill in that entire selection. So I just, I really like to have the foreground and background separated and that's pretty much what I do with these base colors, just so I can have the background shading separate from the foreground. Okay, so normally I have the foreground colors on a lot more layers than this. I think I maybe merged them all together so that I could have an easier time moving it to the mobile format. I'm not 100% sure, but I typically do all of the skin at once and then hair and then clothes. And because of my pretty open line art and it being sketchier in some areas, I cannot really just use the fill tool so I usually will end up just kind of outlining things. I more recently have started for broader areas using the lasso fill tool or the lasso selection tool and having that set to fill or doing the selection tool and sometimes doing the rectangle fill over that. But typically, especially with the hairline and stuff, I want to be using my rough brush to get those edges nice and organic looking. This stage always feels so lifeless. It is almost the characters, but without the eye colors and blush, they just are just a little bit off and it's kind of frustrating. It's so close and yet so far. So then I do the basic background sections, doing a lot of broad strokes of color. I usually save a little bit more detailed things for last. so. Here I did this wall a little bit, having a little bit more interesting stuff happening. And I think the chairs I put in later, so. This is kind of like the special effects, having there be tree bark, putting a window and having some outside be there, the little dust of motion, having a more see-through texture, a lot of things that are more painterly I will do after, but I can, I will sometimes do this after I do the blush definitely not a precise point at which this happens, but I figured it would be good to put in here. Here I put in the colored lines. This can also kind of vary on when I do it. Sometimes I will do it after the blush as well. Just adding some pops of color where I see fit. On this specific page and section of the comic, I was, I think, going into the vector layer and changing the color that way. I have now started just doing a clipping mask and coloring over it that way because I found it's a lot faster to do that. Finally, the blush. They don't look so dead now. Love to see it. Then I will do the shading. I will do the shading on the foreground and then the background. I have it as a separate layer since the foreground is completely separate. And then I just kind of do pretty simple highlights. I will just do that as an overlay layer over everything just because I'm not too concerned about it fitting exactly onto the foreground or not. So here is a screenshot of me doing some editing for it. I changed the font and wanted to remember to do that. I think at this point I was going to just adjust the font to a different one. This is before I was planning on making my own font again. It appears that I did not do the lighting before I showed the editing, but it is what it is. 
lighting happens before that, but I had the finished product after editing. So then I have this little screen capture of me scrolling through what it looks like after doing the mobile format. It's still the old font and speech bubbles, so it's what I had on my phone, easiest to, to access. But as you can see, really depending on how I'm formatting the page, it can really change how it will look mobile because I don't want it to just be so small because it would be pretty small if it, the whole panel was in sideways, but I'm using the whole panel pretty much, so I can't just cut bits of it out. So I really try to do what feels right for the specific panels, so I hope that is kind of clear in how this looks. I think it can be really fun to play around with how that works. Definitely can make it a lot more immersive of an experience, I would say. A lot more control of how it is read. So then I have a little video of me editing it in Snapseed. I would do this also with the mobile format version. I have these settings saved on my Notion, just the numbers that I am planning on using for those. So I don't just have these memorized and it's going to ideally be the same throughout the comic. At the very least throughout the scenes as they are. But I do this just to kind of adjust the colors and contrast a little bit because I, as I've mentioned, I'm not the most confident in my coloring stuff. And then I also add a little bit of a grainy filter onto it just because I really like the texture that that adds. And here is the result from doing that editing. And finally, I am going to throw this into a Clip Studio document, which I have a watercolor layer that I will clip the page to so that the whole page gets that nice watercolor texture. And I can also add a color underneath it so I can give kind of an undertone to a scene if I feel like it. So that is, well, as succinct as a process video as I can get, I suppose. I really, I did have some extra stuff in the beginning, but that's just to show you that it is still kind of messy no matter what you do and there's a lot of ideas that go into getting a page in the first place at all. Once I have gotten to the actual rough draft, it's really pretty formulaic of just plug and chug and get the stuff done. I do really tend to jump around from pages to pages depending on what I am most interested in, but I, since I'm getting ready to start posting, I am focusing a lot more on the very beginning of the comic and getting that ready. Yeah, so that is my process condensed into one video. It is going to be a longer one, so hope you enjoy. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you tomorrow.